happen to be a, being drawn into this activity by a process of osmotic diffusion. I wasn't here, I was here by, <coughs> and I was simply drafted in. Happy to do so in many ways, um, an old institution that I've been associated with. Um, <coughs> we'll do it this way. Um, I'll ask Vice Admiral Vijay Shankar to begin to give his presentation on the nature of this particular new war. We will then have, <coughs> briefly, questions. In other words, if there's something that uh, a speaker, in this particular case, Vijay Shankar, you haven't understood, please ask the question, but we will not have a discussion. It's just a clarification of the point. And then we will then proceed to <coughs> Arun Vishwanathan and thereafter L.B. Krishnan. Same procedure. And immediately thereafter, we can have a discussion with regard to, uh, and, and, and the way in which the discussion will proceed will, of course, depend upon, to some extent, the, manner, uh, the, the content of the um, uh, presentations that have been made. So may I now call upon uh, Admiral Vijay Shankar to give his presentation, please. Thank you. Admiral Shankar. Some may even say that I'm back like a bad penny. But uh, there was one point that I had made uh, uh, in my uh, introduction, and that was the nature of this war. Because we will now assume that these war clouds have actually built up. Uh, it is now important for us to understand as to what form, what character, uh, how is this war likely to uh, play out in the sense, not uh, in, in the termination, but certainly how it is likely to... Uh, Play out because if we do not do these calculations, uh, we would uh, not be able to either rubbish uh, the whole idea or, uh, in fact, say this idea has some uh, some merit. All right, let's get down uh, straight to it. I will not take more than about 20 to 25 uh, minutes, and then uh, we can move on from there. If there are any points that uh, you want to discuss, okay. Uh, there is no template actually to uh, to. Uh, to measure or analyze the nature of uh, any war. The only one that was provided was uh, provided by Clausewitz. Uh, it's an important thing. It's very broad-based. He has also said that between in, within the trinity of people, the military, and uh, governments, uh, uh, things can weigh on any one of these three uh, uh, factors. And each factor has a whole uh, host of sub-factors, and therefore, uh, really, is not saying uh, very much, other than to say that in any war, you have to analyze these three uh, factors. Now, once again, you know, I, ca I cannot tire of, of, of uh, stressing this point, that this bizarre anomaly of Israel driving U.S. policy. While you have found that uh, bigger powers have driven lesser powers uh, in terms of their policy, in terms of their uh, acts, it's never the other way around. And here it would appear is the case. Now you may say it is because of the Jewish lobby in, uh, in America, and you may well be uh, right. But the fact remains, America is not just a Jewish uh, uh, lobby. After all, they have made some very good uh, decisions in the p past, very few and very far in between, like in 1956 during the uh, Suez uh, crisis. So it is not above them to make sane, good decisions. And yet we find that here is something so obvious so bizarre that it merits our, uh, at least a thought of, uh, of uh, this round uh, uh, table. But you can see that if you have a smaller nation with lesser interests, smaller uh, role to play in world uh, politics, actually driving the policy of a, of, a, of a superpower such as America, there's going to be a great element of myopia. And that myopia will, will show up in the kind of uh, action that they take uh, in the ready uh, uh, willingness to shoot from the hip, uh, and indeed, in some cases, even to lie and fabricate. It has occurred in uh, the uh, Iraq's case, and therefore, there's no reason to believe it's not going to happen uh, again, because uh, establishments such as those in America don't really learn from their mistakes. They make them, and they believe that they have a right to make these uh, uh, mistakes on the grounds that some action is better than no uh, action. And uh, coming back to that uh, uh, statement by, uh, by Clausewitz, that wars in the main are fought by the defender, not by the guy who's offending, because he can pull out and get, get uh, packed and move uh, 8,000 miles uh, away, and there's not very little that anybody can do about uh, that. 
Iranian people, I think we've talked about it, uh, and we have an Iranian amongst us who will spend a little time on that. But Iranians are not Arabs. They are not people who are uh, uh, from the same mold as the uh, uh, Middle Eastern uh, states. They have not been created yesterday or uh, within the last ha half a century. They have not been created because of the crumbling of the Ottoman Empire. It was not the breakup of an empire. It was not the victors who carved up uh, Iran. Iran has existed since, uh, since uh, hoary days. I mean, it's been there. They fought wars with Greece. They fought uh, 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 to the east uh, in India. They've sent troops to Central Asia and so on and so forth. So they're not people that can be messed around with without uh, some sane response to being messed around with. Because today, as we see, if you read the Western media, which is the only media that seems to be uh, pushing out papers on uh, uh, Iran, you would actually believe that Iran has grown horns in, since 1979. You'll actually believe that. Because everything, like I gave that little incident of 27% enrichment, why? Because somebody went to, uh, uh, an inspector went to Nantans and found a little particle uh, and which he analyzed and said, well, they've enriched to 27%. Next step is 90 plus. Now, these kind of, uh, should we say, uh, conclusions, while make good uh, reading, uh, they make good press, they, uh, they, they tickle the alarmist, uh, I'm not too sure they have been borne out by any facts uh, at all. Uh, Ends and means, when uh, understanding what is the ends of each one of those uh, uh, protagonists in this, we must also note that there is a large community, a global community, that is going to be affected. While the effects might not be immediately felt in the uh, West, certainly in the East it's going to uh, cause uh, radical changes in our uh, energy uh, policy, which does not come quickly. It's not that you, you know, go from one petrol pump to another and pick it up. You still have to refine that uh, crude that uh, comes in. And each, uh, each uh, source of crude has its own set of peculiarities, and therefore the refinery has to be made for it. It's very costly to have a multipurpose uh, refinery and so on and so forth. So if this 11%, sorry, if this 16, uh, if this 11% is to be made good, then that 11% is going to be made good at considerable loss. I had mentioned that it may affect our economy to the tune of 1.5 to 2%. I think Dr. Arunachalam uh, said that he had done some calculations which say 0.5. Well, these are, these are uh, 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 issues that the experts will have to put down on paper to say it. Uh, these are the figures that uh, I obtained, and uh, uh, it makes some sense because the whole process of, uh, of uh, getting new sources of uh, Energy will take its time. You'll have to invest uh, somewhere else, which is not going to produce any uh, uh, immediate returns. The genius of war. Now, the genius of war comes with uh, experience of war. And uh, uh, there is no other country with the kind of experience that uh, America has had can actually match up to it. Its generalship, its establishments, its ability to actually uh, declare war without going through any democratic process, at least for 90 uh, days, are all inbuilt into that genius to wage war. Hazards and friction, obviously what we talk here is more than likely not to ever happen. Uh, obviously some of the conclusions drawn by the experts may be well off the mark as has been the case in Afghanistan, as has been the case in Iran, as was the case in, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, Vietnam, as was the case in Korea, as was the case in, uh, in China. These are things that uh, perhaps are imponderables, and uh, uh, what would need to be done is establishments such as this, to go deeper into it, to provide the kind of options uh, that may come out at the end of this uh, RT. In the second last point, exertions and national intensity, we're pretty clear that the, for America, it is a part of a policy. For Iran, it is survival. And uh, for a survivor, his ability to uh, accept or uh, embrace any form that may uh, ease him out of the situation will be done. 
because that is the level of uh, intensity and that's a level to which their military will also be in a position or will uh, believe it can exert itself. Information, uh, we believe that we are ruled by information today and we also believe that we have all the information we need. But the fact of the matter is you're always surprised after the first salvo is, uh, is fired and therefore this information uh, 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 remains a source of uh, friction. Do we have the correct information? The whole business about Tony Blair having reportedly told uh, Bush Jr. that actually uh, there's been a sale of uh, yellow cake is a point to note. Something that was never verified or if it was verified was swept under the uh, carpet or if somebody really had to go into the matter to see where this yellow cake had gone at the end of the day and not having found it after so many intrusive inspections, so many bombings. You know, you forget in the case of uh, Iraq, the war never ended in, uh, in uh, 91. There was a period of almost six years of bombing to maintain that uh, no-fly zone. And that no-fly zone correct, uh, covered most of uh, uh, Iraq. We forget that. And practically anything that could produce even a cycle had been bombed. And therefore, at the end of the day, I mean, the figures that are now coming out is that they used uh, over 150,000 tons of uh, munitions and uh, <clears throat> very conveniently the number of civilian casualties has also been calculated as uh, 150,000, which would uh, even by uh, Western uh, equations, that would mean one ton per head. That is the kind of, uh, of, of, of uh, military power that America can actually bring, bring to bear. But if it is brought to bear based on information that is incorrect or definitely off the mark, you can see the amount of or the level of human tragedy that that will uh, cause. Right, let's take each one of these uh, uh, separately. When we talk about the people and their motivations, we note that Iran versus Western powers is dominant tendency of the force of people versus caprice, caprice of policy. And a, a capricious uh, policy can actually uh, result in very little occurring other than uh, human uh, loss. I had uh, used this phrase earlier, when we compare the two militaries, America, their doctrines, and their ability to bring in the sort of material that they can, I think this states it, penury versus plenty. And in such cases, plenty normally wins. There are no fairy tales uh, here. Wins means demolishes uh, what existed. The government, uh, we would be looking forward to uh, our, uh, our Iranian friend to, uh, to elaborate on this. You have a temporal uh, government. You have a Barack Obama who comes out there and says, hey, let's get out of uh, uh, Afghanistan, and actually makes a plan, bluffs his way through, uh, uh, enhances, surges the force level by bringing 30,000 troops and says, by uh, July 14, everybody will be out. Uh, you can see these kind of uh, uh, governmental decisions based in a temporal uh, situation will affect this war in a manner that we fully cannot understand. What will be left behind after the initial military onslaught? On the other hand, we have an Islamic Republic that believes, the stated belief is, that the sovereign is Allah, nobody else. No parliament, no uh, constitution, no people, Allah. So follow his dictates. Now those dictates of course have been modified uh, uh, considerably, but you can see the spiritual backing, which is which is more than likely to uh, steal uh, the people, is in there or reflected in the government itself. Next, I, I think I've mentioned this before. Israel driving U.S. policy causes strategic myopia, and uh, nobody is going to believe that here the superpower is an honest broker. No way. Why? Because of the center heading on top. Israel is driving U.S. policy. When you have a small country with one main insecurity, driving policy, there will be a 
there's no course of history here, out here. The idea is to demolish, remove the nuclear capability that exists in uh, Iran. And they're not going to be satisfied with anything My less. My request is a complete switch off of all machines on the mobile phones and so on, which is causing problems. Thank you. And as a superpower, while they say that, uh, you know, it's another one of those empires that is crumbling, America is going to be around as a superpower for the next, uh, I would reckon, for the next half a century at least. But the erosion of its credibility as a superpower, as an honest uh, broker, as a broker of any kind, is going to take a tumble uh, if action starts here. Come back to the Iranian uh, people. Uh, I have mentioned most of these uh, uh, points, except the second last bullet, where I said the quest for legitimacy and the stresses between nationalists, Islamists, and monarchists. Uh, our uh, Iranian friend is going to address this in more detail, so I leave it at this, that there's a problem within that country, and it is not a problem that cannot be reconciled. After all, in uh, democracies, you have people with widely variant uh, and sometimes deviant uh, uh, opinions and beliefs. And they, they uh, seem to uh, get along reasonably uh, uh, well. Uh, and therefore, there's no reason to believe that some sort of a reconcili reconciliation between the nationalists, Islamists, and monarchists is uh, unlikely. Petropolitics, I think we're all uh, fully aware of this. We have uh, mentioned the uh, two-pillar uh, policy, the, the, the sponsoring and promotion of the Saudi kingdom and uh, uh, Iran, the coup that was, uh, 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 that was uh, played out in 1953 to remove Mossadegh and bring in uh, Reza Pahlavi as uh, uh, the Arya Meher, descendant of the sun. He would have succeeded in India, but in Iran, which by then had become an entrenched Islamic society, there was no way that he was going to succeed. And these differences, those that have been in uh, Iran, will, I'm sure, uh, uh, point out. Now, when we talk about ends and means, the means are available for America to do what it wants there, militarily. The ends are not entirely clear. As a promoter of the NPT, here is a signatory of the NPT who has not transgressed it. So why are you hitting his, uh, his nuclear capabilities? Why should his nuclear capabilities pose a problem to you? After all, he was a willing signatory of the NPT. And even today, he says, there has been no statement made that I will not abide by the, uh, by the, uh, by the uh, rules of the uh, NPT. He's, he's willing. He's wanting to. And yet, you find that there is a motive which is, goes to bullet number one. That this policy, should we say continuity, cannot be maintained. I mean, again, it hits credibility. Survival versus control, where uh, one, uh, one uh, party seeks control of the uh, uh, oil, the energy resources of that uh, area. And it's not control through a, through a military uh, takeover, but control through a pliant uh, uh, regime uh, there. Now, who this pliant regime is going to be is not at all clear. And you can see that the whole thing has not been thought through at all. That if you want to have a pliant uh, regime, you better sponsor some you know, government in exile. But Iran needs no governments in exile. Those that were there were basically monarchists. And they have all been defamed. They've been uh, uh, removed out of those list of people who could actually run this country. And therefore the skewing of the uh, policy. From the Iranian side, the inabilities of asymmetric forces when faced against a superpower are clear. There is no way that these asymmetric forces are going to create a dent in uh, the military might of uh, America. Again, I come back to this. This is the real danger, that a country such as uh, proud country, an old country such as Iran is not going to take it lying down and one should learn that lesson of those 444 days or whatever uh, period those hostages were held. They didn't give them up and neither did they ill-treat them but they kept them as hostages. 
uh, we mustn't forget that immediately after uh, 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 the, uh, the uh, revolution, uh, the next event was this uh, debacle in the desert, as it's been uh, called, which resulted in the hostage taking, and those hostages were kept for the better part of one and a half years. The genius of war. Uh, genius of war comes with uh, experience, having uh, exposures, having establishments that are tailor-made for uh, operations. You know, like uh, when uh, when uh, America decides to have a, a AFCOM, that is a African uh, command, it's clear as to what the future is. Why is it that they're creating? Why did they create CENTCOM? You could see why they've created it. Why are they creating AFCOM? It doesn't take very much to extrapolate to say why it is done. And that really is the genius of war, an establishment that is willing to quickly change in order to cater, or they believe to cater for changing uh, circumstances. Uh, clearly, whatever military action uh, is taken, it will be at the cost of stability in that area. And by stability, we mean disruption. Disruption of shipping, disruption of uh, energy flow, disruption of people. Lessons of Afghanistan, war termination, a function of not some great policymakers in Israel and Tel Aviv or something like that. It's going to be a function of the victim's uh, acceptance. And if the victim, in this case, Iran, is more than likely not to accept the way uh, the Americans chose to terminate, uh, will choose to terminate this uh, conflict. Wars in opposition to the aims of globalization, that's uh, uh, perhaps a, a, a bit of an idealistic statement, but you can see it is against the aims of globalization. Globalization was about growth for everybody. The nuclear factor, I briefly touched on this. What happened to uh, Saddam? What happened to Libya? Iranian planners are not blind to all this. That if there's one thing that prevented, that would prevent uh, a quick military action in North Korea was that they had a bomb. And now you come to a peculiar situation that will I go to war and risk whatever, however minuscule that risk may be, a nuclear uh, exchange especially where American people are involved. Don't forget, in South Korea, there are many divisions of American soldiers still there, and so too in Japan. So the nuclear factor is going to play a, a role here. What role it will play? Will, uh, will Iran continue to uh, shake his uh, head uh, like uh, a Malayali when he says this? He means no. I mean, he means yes. And when he say, does this, means no. Simple as that. Will he continue to uh, play this charade? Uh, because clearly, it does not, have, there does, does not appear to be uh, a weaponization or anywhere near weaponization. In fact, uh, American analysts themselves say that for the next five years, there's no way that they can come anywhere near a bomb. Uh, there are always hazards, friction, and exertion. If there's one lesson, that, uh, that uh, the last 50 years, or the last 100 years, or maybe the last 1,000 years teaches us that every plan works up to the first salvo. After the first salvo, your plan has to change. You have to modify. Why? Because there are certain things you never expected would happen. There are certain imponderables that come into uh, uh, play. Uh, Cargill is, a, is, a, is an example. One really tries to understand what is the meaning of this uh, action, where you lost almost... You know, both sides lost almost uh, 700 uh, uh, soldiers. What was the aim? Not really clear. Did they not believe that there would be a response? Was there a miscalculation of such a monumental uh, extent? <clears throat> Intensity of exertions I've, uh, I've uh, mentioned will be on the side of the uh, victim here, primarily because it is his survival as far as he's concerned. And recourse to a strategy of despair, there is something that I'd like to underscore in every one of my slides, that if there is a military conflict, this is a direction in which the Iranian people will be driven to. Uh, 
you know, nature of all the information, which is really the last point. Somehow the West believes that uh, information is malleable. You know, I, I, I can make my own interpretations, I can create the information, I can give a spin to any event uh, uh, that occurs. And uh, I have actually, I'm now quoting from that uh, 2011 IAEA report, Iran has carried out activities relevant to and consistent with development of nuclear weapons. What are these activities? I mean, surely a report by the IAEA uh, would go into a little more details, and there's no mention of what the activities uh, are. Uh, tomorrow, if you say that it was the physics, phys uh, physics package that was tried out, which is actually what they're suggesting, anybody can come and say, hey, hey, Shivakazi, you're building uh, nuclear weapons. Why? Because they're working with a round-looking uh, uh, Diwali cracker. I mean, this is going, becoming absurd that the kind of evidence that they're trying to uh, create, uh, none of it is either verifiable or has been verified or authenticity here, authenticity they believe to be the chairman of the IAEA who has signed that uh, report. Shades of the reported transfer of yellow cake from uh, Niger to Iraq to give an excuse. There must be some sort of a you know, create a loophole through which you uh, hammer home uh, a couple of fleets and uh, say about a thousand uh, tomahawks, which is exactly what is being uh, uh, attempted uh, here. And in this case, they will probably do it. That is my own uh, uh, analysis. Do not oppose a military uh, establishment that is so strong, historically has been strong, that has dealt in spinning stories, that has dealt in making statements that are never verifiable. I mean, after all, after I declare war, is there any way of making a reasonable assessment as what would have happened had we not gone to war? There isn't, because the event has uh, occurred. Uh, would anyone have believed that Rumsfeld, single-handedly, could lead the military establishment the way he did? Could anyone believe that? I think not, and therefore the prognosis isn't all that good. The prognosis is hardly clear, but you can see a military uh, conflict is in the offing. Thank you very much.